The Wildfowl and Wetland Trust Reserve at Welney in Norfolk covers over a thousand acres and hosts a wealth of wetland wildlife. Today, however, I'm in search of not one, but three species of egret that now call the UK their home. And the first on my list is hanging around with this woolly bunch. You don't normally catch me sheep watching. I've got nothing against sheep, but I rather like sheep, actually. But what I'm after is a bird that associates itself with sheep and cattle. And there it is perched on a sheep, the cattle egret. The idea of seeing a cattle egret when I first got into birds way back in the 1970s would have been a complete anathema. They were not going to be on my list, despite the fact that they are one of the world's most successful birds. And why have they turned up here in the UK, started breeding in 2008 in Somerset? It's this pasture and all of those animals. Those animals are doing a lot of work for the cat egret. As they mooch across the grass, they disturb any invertebrates that are there, and as a consequence, make them easier to find for those egrets. And they prosper wherever we have our herds. If I was wearing one, I'd take my hat off to the cat egret. Preferring a paddle to pastures is the second egret I'm in search of. Look at that. A little flutter. And then a really sharp stab with that stiletto bill. Some unfortunate stickleback is now sliding down the throat of that little egret. Such an elegant bird. So here's a bird that's really widespread over southern Europe, crossed the Channel and started to breed initially in the south of England, then they moved up through the east coast, they moved up into Wales, they're even in Scotland now. And they're a fabulous addition to our bird fauna, there's no doubt about that at all. I like the little egret, I like it very, very much, my kind of bird. And guess what? Little egret is on my garden list. Looked out of the bathroom window, little egret flying through the garden. And I would never have believed that when I first picked up a pair of binoculars. Last, but by no means least, is the largest of our three egret species. Now, I know that that white speck is a long way away but it's still, nevertheless, an impressive bird. Great white egret, or great egret. They were the last of our white egrets to arrive. By the year 2000, on average, there were about 25 in the country, but it wasn't until 2012 that they bred for the first time. So they're doing really well. So I suppose the question is, why are we lucky enough to have gained these three egret species in a relatively short space of time, essentially from the 90s through to now. A lot of reasons, undoubtedly, but climate change is playing a significant role. Certainly when it comes to the cat egrets, they can't take cold winters. There aren't enough invertebrates out in the grassland for them. The good thing is that they seem to have integrated themselves into our ecology without any negative impacts on other species, such as grey heron and bitter. So, you could argue that in egret terms, it's a win-win-win situation. <laughs> <laughs>